have to tell you a story about a very rocky romance. It's the story of my relationship with STEM. For those of you who may be living under a rock, STEM is an acronym for science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. As a spoiler alert, my story has a happy ending. I'm now a technology lawyer at an international media company where I specialize in big data and drones. Finding new and innovative ways to use our drones for news gathering is a significant part of my job. In fact, my team recently received the first ever license to fly a drone over people in the US. But the fact that I ended up in a STEM career may seem a little surprising, given that I hated it during my formative years. The truth is, we don't normally think of STEM-hating girls as having a bright future in the tech industry. But I'm here today to ask you to reconsider that idea, because I believe that girls and women who have strayed from the STEM path can help transform the world of technology for the better. And with that in mind, my story begins when I was in elementary school. At this age, I loved science and math. So here I am on Christmas morning in about the second or third grade, opening up a microscope. As you can see, I was pretty stoked. I loved this microscope so much that I remember breaking it out during a sleepover at my house so that my friend Kara and I could look at algae. Fun, right? But a few years after this photo was taken, things changed for me. As shown by this eighth grade diary entry declaring my hatred for algebra, my early love for math and science started to fade during middle school. Algebra became my frenemy. It was difficult to understand and just made me feel bad about myself. And just as my hatred for math was starting to drive me away from all things STEM, other subjects started to draw me in. I loved writing and design so much that in high school, I co-published my own socially conscious magazine called Teacup with my best friend Erin and sold it to my classmates. I became really interested in politics and gender equality. I quoted Margaret Thatcher to anyone who would listen. <laughs> if you want anything said, ask a man. If you want anything done, ask a woman. <laughs> I couldn't wait to turn 18 so that I could finally vote. But in the midst of my love affair with writing and the liberal arts, I still had occasional encounters with STEM. I even ended up taking AP Physics during my senior year of high school. Looking back, this is where I reached a fork in the road that led me away from STEM for many years to come. So here I am on the left in physics class doing something. <laughs> Actually, let's face it, I may be copying that other girl's lab work. <laughs> Sorry, Mrs. Joyner. At the end of the year, my physics teacher paired each of us with an engineer for a special physics career day. I ended up being paired with an agricultural engineer on a peanut farm like the one shown in this photo. No offense to President Jimmy Carter and those of you with a peanut farming heritage, but it was the most boring day of my life. I didn't even get to ride on the tractor. Needless to say, I did not major in engineering when I went to college. Instead, I poured my energy and passion into the liberal arts and declared political science as my major. And my interest in writing and politics ultimately led me to law school. When I finished law school 11 years ago, I figured that STEM was finally behind me and that I would simply write and argue my way into a successful legal career. As it turns out, I was completely wrong. You see, my company started to use data and drones to innovate our business, and I realized that if I wanted to be good at my job, I needed to know how this stuff actually worked. At first, this made me feel pretty intimidated. When I first started working in drones, I had never even seen a drone in person before. But I dove in because, well, I knew that I had to. And before long, I was waist deep in STEM. Take a look at this formula. Now, as I mentioned, my company recently received a license to fly a drone over people. This formula 
was the cornerstone of our safety case to the government. It helped us calculate whether we can operate a drone safely over people based on factors like kinetic energy. Given my past turbulent relationship with STEM, I was surprised to discover how intrigued I was by all this. In a way, it made me feel empowered, like I had control over a subject that once controlled me. And I realized something else, too. Let me show you some footage that my company's news team captured in Kobani, Syria, using a drone after the town had been decimated by airstrikes. See the crisis caused and simply how homes, ordinary life, have been destroyed by those consistent airstrikes you could so easily see. But it's only the drone's eye view that really opens up that level of damage. When I saw this footage, I was blown away. In a flash, I realized that STEM was a tool that could be used to do all of the things that I've always loved to do. Tell stories, create awareness, and inspire social justice. What I loved was not just the technology, but what we can do with it. Now, as promising as all this technology is, we're being hindered by one very important and nagging factor. The tech industry is completely dominated by men. Study after study shows that this lack of diversity impairs everything from our ability to innovate to our bottom lines. And yet the gender gap has stubbornly persisted for decades. And it doesn't seem to be getting much better. By some estimates, there will be 1.4 million computing jobs by the year 2020, and women are on track to fill just 3% of those roles. 3%? Now, I've certainly experienced this gender gap firsthand. As you can see from this photo, my wonderful drone teammates are mostly men. My partners in the industry and in the government are also mostly men. <laughs> at my meetings and negotiations, it's not at all uncommon for me to be the only woman in the room. I try not to let this bother me, but sometimes it just does. For example, a couple of years ago, I was at a drone expo, and I remember looking out, and literally, as far as my eye could see, there was a sea of men. I felt a little isolated and self-conscious. Never before had I been quite so aware that I was different. I realized that some men might not have much experience with the feelings that I've just described. As a case in point, I was recently at a women's networking event hosted by a very male-dominated company. Of course, most of the guests were women, but I was pleasantly surprised to see a handful of men in attendance, too. It was pretty clear that these men were a little out of place among all of these women. They couldn't fully participate in our conversations, and they just weren't fitting in. One guy awkwardly stood in the corner and looked like he didn't know what to do with his hands. <laughs> For this one occasion, the majority was the minority. Unfortunately, many women in the tech industry go through their entire careers feeling this exact same way. I have a daughter, and I want to change things for her and for all of our daughters so that they don't have to feel this way when it's their turn at the wheel. I believe my industry can change, and I think we can do this by casting a wider net and bringing in girls and women of unique backgrounds who can help make our technology better. Let's start with all the smart girls who have special creative talents. I'd like to speak directly to each girl out there who loves to dream, imagine, or just think big. The truth is, the tech industry needs people just like you to help dream up our most revolutionary technology. You can design and create the next generation of robots and drones. The link between your creative talents and ingenious technology is so important that some experts have abandoned the acronym STEM in favor of STEAM 
where the A stands for arts. And let's actively recruit the women who steered away from a traditional STEM path like I did. I'm speaking now to the women who fell head over heels for liberal arts and never considered a tech career to be a possibility. STEM wants you back. And believe it or not, your liberal arts background gives you the skills you need to design beautiful and intuitive technology and communicate the value of it to others. As Steve Jobs said, it's technology married with the humanities, married with the liberal arts, that yields us the results that make our hearts sing. And now I'd like to speak to those of you who currently work in the tech industry. One of the most important things you can do to help women succeed is to provide them with the right support networks. I'll give you an example of what I'm talking about. Over the past couple of years, I've realized that there is a small but mighty group of women who populate the drone landscape. Many of us are part of a newly formed nonprofit group called Women of Commercial Drones. Here's a photo of a few of us from a recent White House drone event. Our members come from many different backgrounds, including engineering, but also media, public policy, and even real estate. And knowing this gave me the confidence to see what I could bring to the table based on my own experience. The truth is, it's going to take a multi-threaded effort to bring gender balance to the tech industry. I stumbled my way into tech, and I was lucky in that I had the support of my colleagues and outside mentors. But luck alone is not enough to get the job done. We have to begin recruiting talented women and girls of unique backgrounds and empowering them to become leaders as if the future depends on their success. Because it does. If we can open our minds to these possibilities, I believe we can create a new reality where the difficult part of a tech career is the job itself and not a person's gender. Thank you.